Hi, my name is Omar Gonzalez and I'm a portrait and event photographer in New Jersey and I'm going to give you five tips on posing non-models, which is basically everyone. Okay, tip number one, put the camera down. <laughs> Before you start shooting, it's best if you have a little pre-shoot orientation or a warm-up. I like to take my clients, my non-model clients aside, and let them know what the shoot is going to be like. I'll let them know what I'm thinking when I take a photograph, and then we'll move into sort of an actual warm-up, um, almost to get everyone loose. And I like during this little warm-up, physical warm-up, to actually go through some of the poses that we'll be doing. Now, one way I show them how we'll be posing is to actually demo, uh, pretend to be them and, <laughs> and make them the photographer and actually show them how we will be shaping our bodies. The second way is to actually teach them how to pose, how to take instruction by mirroring. If you're mirroring, that just means, and by the way, this is where you learn who knows how a mirror works. <laughs> but if we turn, instead of saying turn right and turn left, it's great if they just do the opposite of what you're doing. So if you need them to turn, they will turn. Did you do it right? Did you do it right? And the last thing that warm up is great for is to actually assess your non-models level of shyness or outgoingness, how reserved they are. And that's important to guide the whole shoot you can get some hints about how much, how, how crazy the shoot can get, or is it gonna stay nice and mellow? So the pre-shoot is super important. Okay, tip number two is always think angles. When I'm photographing a person, I basically think of the person as being straight on and I need to mold them by making angles with their body. It can either be something as simple as leaning someone on a wall, which will give you a little bit of an angle, tilting of the head, which will change the straight angle. Also, arms are important. We like to put you know, an arm in a pocket to get a little bit of an angle. We use belt loops. You could use a little bit of a jacket or playing with hair. Anything that gets the arms to bend gives you interesting angles of the arms. Also, some people don't know what to do with their hands, so it's great if you either get them to sort of lather their hands, that always gives a nice pose, especially for boys. And then you can also have people play with a bracelet or, you know, with a ring or something just to get them, you know, just to have them doing something with their hands. Now getting angles from the legs, you can actually do some down poses. You have the person sit on their back foot and everyone does the down pose a little bit differently, but you get cool angles. It's almost like a hip hop pose, cool angles of the legs. Um, and then you can actually, you know, shape the arms around that. Also use the location to your advantage. I love using steps. If you put people in seating poses, you can actually, you know, skew their feet a little bit to give you some angles on the legs. Legs can, you know, knees can be together or apart. People can lean on their legs. Just try different things with the body. And it's really helpful if you do these things yourself in a mirror or have someone photograph you so you can start to see what looks good in camera. Tip number three, variety at a location. I like to maximize the number of looks and poses I get at a location. So work a space, find a cool composition, cool steps, and have the person do different things at that location. Now, the first thing we work on is expression. So I like to have three levels of expression. The first one we call cool person or magazine, which is where you have a little bit of a smolder. Number two, we call soft or painting of a painting of you, where it's just a nice little sparkle in the eye, nice little expression. And the third one is fun, where we have people laughing, we have real expressions, we have authentic emotional experiences, which is great to capture. So those three are the three levels we like to get at each location. Something else you can do is have the person look off camera. Not every photograph needs to be looking in camera. You can actually have your non-models look at different locations. You can also vary the shoulders, head, and eyes. So you can have them shoulders one way, head somewhere else, and then eyes on you, which gives you the three different looks. Or you can have shoulders on you, head looking somewhere else, 
eyes somewhere else. So you can actually play around with those different angles. Also, I like to change my focal length. I like to go from a wider shot to a little bit tighter and maybe very tight like a headshot at the location. This gives you different poses, gives you different looks at the same spot. Tip number four, movement and burst. I like to get my clients moving, especially if they're just a little bit stiff. One thing you can do is just up your frames per second, something like five to 10 frames a second, and actually get the person walking and jumping and skipping and moving. And you can actually build up from walking to skipping and jumping. And think about it, after doing these fun movements, you also get great expressions after the person does a skipping. Everyone is, everybody laughs after skipping. <laughs> so be sure you're ready with your burst to get those real authentic moments afterwards of the person's face. Now, the other great thing that motion does is it breaks set poses. A lot of people have set poses, especially if they're taking their own selfie. You get a lot of head tilts and little like I'm cute looks. They'll do that in every photograph. So sometimes you need to break that. And a great way is to get the person moving and, you know, turning around and spinning and, you know, just keep them confused. <laughs> and a lot of times you break that those, you know, set pose habits. Number five, don't underestimate your non-models. There's so many times that I've been amazed that a non-model on the other side of my camera automatically becomes a model. They've never modeled before, but they just have something. They know how to move and, and, and lean and they give you cool looks on command. So also know when you don't have to control the whole shoot. Let some of your non-models loose to just give you anything. They just have it keep flowing towards your camera. And another thing is take a look at non-models between shots. Some people just stand or rest a certain way that has angles and looks cool, make sure you freeze them because that is the authentic them. And so just say, wait, 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 don't move, don't move, don't move. And maybe have them look a certain way, but that's how they stand, which is really great to get, that is the goal, to get the authentic portrait of someone. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Have fun posing your non-models.